Welcome again to uh, Prophetic Reflective News on HRN Revive TV. I'm your host today, Arnold Threat, and as promised, we're going to deviate just a little bit from our Isaiah series, but the deviation uh, is going to add a whole lot of content and understanding, I believe, uh, to what we're looking at here in Isaiah. And it happens to be uh, a half Torah for one of our uh, Torah lessons uh, in this month. And it's found in Zechariah uh, chapter 2. Uh, most people who know uh, Arnold Threat know that I really like uh, the books of Ezekiel. But... Uh, Zechariah is a very powerful one, I think, that sort of pulls together maybe some of the other prophet books and gives us some clarification. And what we want to look at today uh, is talking about the same things that we've been looking at in Isaiah, but from a little different perspective. So I ask you to join me in uh, Zechariah chapter 2, and we're just going to start in verse 1 and do a little reading. So here we go. I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, a man and a measuring line in his hand. And I said, Where are you going? And he said to me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is its breadth and what is its length. Now, excuse me, did they not already know? Yes, they did, but this was for us to see, and it was for us to see that we have to go to another part of the prophetic word to find part of our answer here. So that other part of the prophetic word is none less than the revelation of our Messiah Yeshua chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 so let's read there and a reed like a staff was given to me and the cherub stood saying rise and anoint the sanctuary of Yahweh and the altar and those worshiping in it and cast aside the outside court of the sanctuary and do not anoint it it has been given to the nations, and they will trample the whole holy city for 42 months. Now, wow, I want us to look at something here. The cherub here is telling John to rise and anoint the sanctuary and the altar, but do not anoint the outer court because that has been given to uh, the nations for 42 months. Now, we know that 42 months is also the time of the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. So as we see something here that we possibly haven't looked at before, and that is this, that part of what would be called the sanctuary complex of our Creator King is now been anointed, which means it's been set apart as holy and Kodesh. And if we have our understanding correct, then He's talking about us because we are the temple of the Most High here. So He has taken the sanctuary and the altar, which is those two items, and he's already anointed them and declared them as holy or Kodesh and set them apart. And those who would be in there would be set apart, not being involved in what else is going on on the planet interesting thought that he's saying he's just making that revelation there now why am i excited about that because there is one congregation in the first three chapters of the revelation of yeshua and it starts in uh, verse 7 
through 13, and it's the Church of Philadelphia, or the Congregation of Philadelphia, if you will. So as we look at that and we understand that, he says in that passage, and I've read that oftentimes, so I'm just going to reference to it and quote some things out of it. Uh, he identifies himself there as Yeshua, and one of the things that he does and can do is he opens doors that nobody can close and closes doors that nobody can open. And he says, I have opened a door before you. I see you have a little strength left, but you are to hold on and walk through that door that I've had open for you. So I am considering that these two are tied together. He has anointed part of the sanctuary complex the altar, and the sanctuary. But he left the outside court apart. It has not been anointed, has not been set apart yet for the very end time because the nations will trample in it for 42 months. So back to verse 3 here. And behold, the angel who was talking with me went out and another angel went out to meet him and said to him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem will dwell like unwalled villages for the multitude of men and livestock in her midst, and I will be to her a wall of fire all around, and I will be for glory in her midst, declares Yahweh. This will happen when Yeshua sets up the millennial kingdom and he will be the wall of fire because it says that peace is never breached again in uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 and 37. So we see here those great promises that we're reading here, we can get excited because we're on the verge, I believe, of being able to enter into some of these things that we're starting to see. So join me again here in verse 6. It says, Woe, woe, flee from the land of the north, says Yahweh. Now, that is a very interesting prophetic thing because uh, he has often hid a lot of his children, especially Judah and Ephraim, have all been from the north. And he's saying, look, get out of there. Get back to my land. For I have scattered you as the four winds of the heavens, declares Yahweh. Woe, O Zion, escape you who live with the daughter of Babylon. Interesting thought, huh? The daughter of Babylon, which is very much alive today and who is carting away all the people of the planet and trying to encircle Yahweh's people to destroy them. So here we see one of the seven very clear commands for us to get out of Babylon. And may we soon uh, be free of all the grip of Babylon in our life. Let's pick up again here in verse 8. For so says Yahweh of hosts, He has sent me after glory to the nations to plunder you, for he who touches you touches the pupil of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand over you, and they shall be a prize for your servants. And you shall know what Yahweh has sent me. Now, I want to capitalize here on a tactic here that he's using. He says, and if you recall, uh, when we were reading about Egypt, in a previous, that he was shaking his hand over them. He is saying that here again. He is shaking his hand over them. Uh, and he's saying to us, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, 
For lo, I come, and I will dwell among you, says Yahweh. And many nations shall be joined to Yahweh in that day, and they shall be my people, and I will dwell among you, and you shall know that Yahweh of hosts has sent me to you. This should get us all tremendously excited because this is yod vav coming after not only his people Israel, to which we are part of, but all the nations will be coming together to worship Yahweh in the millennial kingdom. Verse 12, And Yahweh shall possess Judah, his portion in the holy land, and he shall again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before Yahweh, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Now, that is a signal for us to understand that this is the very end because he raises up out of his holy habitation to get ready to bring all the wrath that he's about to bring on planet Earth against all those people who have finally and ultimately refused him and has refused the Anna Messiah. So I want to move on here to chapter 3 and pull a couple of things together. And uh, in our next session, we will continue this same uh, passage out of uh, Zechariah, but we're going to look at uh, chapters 4 and 5. But here in chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, and he made me see Joshua the high priest standing before the messenger of Yahweh and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. And Yahweh said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan, and Yahweh who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? Now we have a historical picture here before us because Hasitan has yet to be kicked out of the heavenlies, yet we see this scene taking place where he is bringing back together the end time remnant, I believe, out of Judah back to Jerusalem and establishing Jerusalem again as his place of residence prior to the millennial kingdom. But we see something here uh, in verse 3, and Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, and he stood before the messenger of Yahweh, and he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And he said to him, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with ceremonial robes. Now we know in Romans uh, 3.23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Yahweh. But this is symbolic, I believe, in this passage of Zechariah of saying that they have covered their garments, their lives, with the blood of the Lamb, and they have been made clean so that they can rule with a Messiah for a thousand years. So this is not just a cleaning at Yahweh's discretion. Uh, he would never do that. He would never override his own word. So we see here that this is symbolic of these people who I believe is speaking of Judah here, that they have been cleansed. This is, I believe Joshua is representing Judah here, and Judah is being cleansed from all of their iniquity. So in verse 5, as we pick up there, And I said, Let them set a clean turban on his head. And they set a clean turban on his head, and clothed him with clothing, and the messenger of Yahweh stood by. And the messenger of Yahweh repeated again, saying to Joshua. Now, I'm going to pause here, and I'm going to say that this is the charge 
that Yahweh has given in so many places and so many times to so many people, and here he's given it again. And that charges to us as well. And he's saying to us, will you embrace my Torah and will you serve me with your whole heart, with your whole strength and your whole might and not deviate from my Torah? Will you not mix what I'm telling you as how I want you to keep my house rules and not deviate from it? Verse 7. So says Yahweh of hosts, if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my charge, then you shall also judge my house and shall also keep my courts. And I will give you access to walk among those who stand by. There is another uh, little hint that we will be, prior to a lot of the other events that will be happening, we will be able to walk with those who stand by, which I believe will be the heavenly host. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, you and your associates who are sitting before you, for they are men of symbol. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone which I have given before Joshua on that one stone are seven eyes. I will engrave its engraving, says Yahweh of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. And in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, you shall invite each man to his neighbor to sit under the vine and under the fig tree. Guess what? This is where we leave off. But I encourage you to go read chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Zechariah where we will finish up and we will see some more prophetic word that is revealed to us in our next session. So this is Arnold Threat bidding you shalom.